Hi, I'm recording this while I'm sick and my vocal range has been severely restricted. This morning, my speaking voice dropped to a C-sharp 2, which is the lower end of what people normally consider bass range. So my high notes are pretty much unsingable at this point. And I'm talking under these circumstances to bring up some points about the questions of how we evaluate whether someone can sing and who is allowed to sing in society and why. I think that the, the question that if you're not good enough, if you haven't been trained and been given lessons and been licensed to perform in front of an audience, then if you try to sing, you'll hurt yourself, has some wide-ranging health implications for society. The wider one's vocal range, it seems to me, the more quickly it's possible to discover that you're sick. The more obvious the illness, the more obvious it will be in the change in your voice, but the greater your vocal range is, the higher the notes you can sing, the sooner you'll find out that there's something wrong with you, and it seems to me that this is the underlying anxiety that a lot of people don't want to face. I've noticed that there's something wrong with my throat because I've been able to sing high notes. I haven't injured myself by singing high notes. And when people's top vocal range disappears, it can be indicative of a lot of things. It can mean exposure to environmental problems, health pollutants like dust, mold, chemicals, and so on. Or it could be a digestive problem like acid reflux or a sensitivity or intolerance to certain types of foods. Or it could be a psychological thing. Someone might be on place to be placed under new stress, like trying to get rid ready for an upcoming gig or having to sing in front of an audience or to be judged. And, and so these things are a big source of anxiety in Canadian and American society. People are brought up to be afraid of singing and told not to sing and told not to sing too high. And if they don't do this, if you don't develop your vocal range sufficiently, then you won't have a means of diagnosing when there's something wrong with your health. So it seems to me there's an uh, incentive for people who would not want people to, to discover that they're unhealthy uh, to tell them not to sing. Of course, ultimately, uh, we can't really judge someone's true potential for singing, I don't think, because if someone were to say, I'm sick, therefore right now I can't sing, I can't give a proper representation of what my voice can do because I'm sick, we would say, well, that might be an acceptable argument, but everyone is sick. We are all terminally ill, we're all aging, so we don't really know what anyone is capable of as a singer. And it seems to me that a lot of the anxiety connected with singing has to do with, with mortality. Many of our popular songs, most of them really, are about either love or religion. And the love songs are really just another form of prayer, really, with a different deity being the beloved. So these are uh, attempts to deal with anxiety around aging and illness. And we do this by cutting down the vocal range, trying to do less with our range than we normally could, and then praising people who do that so that we're collectively, we don't have to face our problems.